welcome to the final Wadham Chapel Evensong of Trinity Term 2020, coming to you from Wadham Chapel. The last Evensong of the year is traditionally the Leavers Evensong, when we celebrate the achievement and contribution of our Leavers and wish them Godspeed for the next stage of their journey. Our readers and musicians tonight are drawn from Wadham Leavers from the JCR, MCR, the Sarah Lawrence Program and the Wadham Chapel Choir. And we're pleased to say that our speaker tonight for the chapel final Leavers Evensong is our very own Tom Sinclair, who is our tutorial fellow in philosophy, who will talk about the special challenges and opportunities facing the Leavers this year. In chapel this year, we began the year 2020 with the theme Seeing Clearly. And little did we know just how painfully clear many things would become to us over the course of 2020. It's become clear just how vulnerable each one of us is to things like pandemic disease in an interlinked world. We've seen how every aspect of our lives can be drastically altered. It's become clear in the past few weeks just how precariously our society is balanced on the fault lines of class and race, of power and privilege, fault lines that have split wide open since the death of George Floyd two weeks ago. And closer to home, we can't avoid seeing how these very same fault lines also underlie Oxford University and our particular colleges. At Wadham, we're challenged to see this with new clarity, to look with deeper scrutiny at the legacy left to us by past generations, including in our own chapel. So we began the 2020 theme of seeing clearly with a chapel talk and a chapel trip, exploring the radical activist legacy of William Blake who fought with his pen and brush against inequality and slavery of all kinds, whose vision of a universal humanity and the dignity of each person still inspire. We sang his great hymn, Jerusalem, then, and we will close our Evensong tonight with Jerusalem again. Because it wouldn't be the Wadham Leavers Evensong without Jerusalem. It's like a bop without mandela -ing. But Blake's Jerusalem is more than just fine words sung to a rousing tune. It's a call to wake up. It's a call to arms, a call to see unflinchingly, and to act with determination for the dignity and freedom of every human being. So Wadham class of 22, it's over to you. Welcome to your Evensong. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For thou the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love, O Lord, and yours forever. Do not forsake the work your hands. The first reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. 
Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace that in keeping with thy commandment, we may please thee, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And so we come to the notices. Our anthem this evening is the magnificent, O Thou, the central orb of righteous love. The music is by Charles Wood, the Anglo-Irish composer and teacher who died in 1926. And it's a poem by Henry Ramsden Bramley, an English vicar and hymnographer who died in 1917. It's sung by the Wadham Chapel Choir in lockdown. It's a composition, as you'll see, of many separate videos sent in by choir members and mixed by our music director, Dr. Katie Pardee. Our speaker this evening is Dr. Tom Sinclair, who's tutorial fellow in philosophy. Tom's writing concerns political philosophy and ethics. He's interested in questions about the authority of political rule, the nature of justice and injustice, and the relation between political authority and justice. In ethics, his work focuses on understanding the contours of everyday ethical thinking and identifying theoretical justifications for it. So we're very pleased to welcome as our chapel speaker, Tom Sinclair, who also served as tutor for undergraduates and who will be familiar to many of our readers. People often see student life as time out of real life. Students themselves sometimes see it that way too, as a kind of borrowed time of intellectual exploration and intense friendships and developing identities and political awakening in which the exigencies of the real world are gloriously postponed. But the contrast between student life and real life has always seemed a bit overdrawn to me, and not just because, as an academic, I have opted for the life of the eternal student myself. Is it so clear that intellectual exploration and intense friendships and developing identities and politics are not the stuff of real life? The idea suggests frivolity and inconsequence, as if these are childish things that must sooner or later give way to the more weighty matters of business and ownership and real responsibility. But what could be more weighty than knowledge, friendship, politics and the self? I suppose the point of drawing the contrast is only to register a recognition that in our social world, for most people, the stresses of finding and keeping a job and a home, of providing for oneself and one's family, and of staying healthy inevitably leave a person with too little time and energy for hours of deep study or conversation or political engagement. It registers appreciation of the enormous privilege that it is to be able to keep those stresses at bay, even for a few extra years. In a different way, the coronavirus lockdown has engendered a sense of unreality too. It has not placed life's stresses in abeyance, of course, only reconfigured them, and in most cases, for the worse. But it has also allowed glimpses of a world of common purpose and solidarity, of new connections with neighbours, of recognition for unsung workers, of quiet streets and birdsong. And in that way, it has shown that how much space there is in life for human connection and civic engagement and appreciation of the natural world is partly a collective political choice. For the socio-economic system that determines our options is itself a matter of choice. As the lockdown comes to an end, we have a rare moment in which this fact is vividly present to us. Those of you who are leaving Wadham this year, like Wadham's leavers every year, will be some of the country's ablest graduates of law, chemistry, medicine, philosophy, languages, engineering, and dozens of other degrees. That will put you at the forefront of any transition to a better system in the decades to come. And it is not only the self-discipline, the demanding tutors, and the hours in labs or revising for exams or writing dissertations that have prepared you for the work that will be necessary to build back better. It is also all that intellectual exploration and deep conversation and developing identity and political awakening that seems so set apart from real life. These are what enable you to use this moment to look at our social world with an unjaded, critical eye. And so, as you take with you the values that Wadham embodies, of excellence and inclusiveness and collegiality and care, you give hope that what has been the real world for so many years, with its vast inequalities, its assaults on truthfulness and earnestness, and its catastrophic environmental destruction, you give hope that this may in the end come to look like it was but a brief exception.
So we come to our prayers of intercession. God of our beginnings and endings, we celebrate all we have shared together in this place. We ask your blessing as we continue on our journey. May the times that we have shared bind us together wherever we may be, and may the power of your presence hallow this moment of leave-taking. Amen. As we prepare to journey on, we ask forgiveness where we may have failed one another or ourselves. Help us to let go of whatever holds us back. Help us to heal any painful memories and bind up our wounds. Shed your restoring grace upon fractured relationships and assure us of your love and care. Amen. As we experience the pain of change and uncertainty and the insecurity of moving on, we pray that all members of Wadham, whether we are leaving or remaining, may know the grace of inner resilience and hope. As we meet the silenced, the marginalized, the oppressed, and the stranger on the way, we pray that we may share in the journeys of others as channels of peace and wholeness. Amen. For those returning home, for those who aren't sure where home is anymore, for those searching for employment, for those planning further study, for those who have no clue what lies ahead, for those returning after the long bout, on all of us we ask God's blessing and peace. Amen. So go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God, the three in one, the one in three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Rest upon you and remain with you this night 
and forever. Amen.